Hey guys, I'm Joey with American Eats, and I want to tell you about my amazing weekend in Denver. So I flew in Friday morning to the Denver International Airport, and you may have heard that there is this very odd statue of a massive blue horse with glowing red eyes that's called a Blue Mustang, but I think everyone refers to it as Lucifer because it is a haunting, haunting statue. I don't know why it's there, but it's supposed to pay tribute to this Western expansion, but I mean, when you see it, you're gonna just have a little bit of a, you're gonna get a chill to your spine when you go there. So once you get past that, you're ready to take on this amazing city. So uh, I got into to stay with some of my friends who live in Jefferson Park, which is a really nice neighborhood slash city. What's really great about Denver is that it, it very naturally integrates residential and commercial zones. So you might be walking from a bar and then go one block and suddenly you're in front of a strip of houses. And it's not like in New York where it's apartments and you have to go up and it's super expensive, but everything just naturally flows as one city. So we got into Jefferson Park and then we immediately went to a coffee shop called 2914 Coffee where I got an amazing iced Americano, but they do a little twist on one of their drinks where it's a cayenne pepper mocha. And so I'm not a big mocha fan, so I asked if they could add cayenne pepper to the ice Americano. Let me tell you, it was a wild combination of caffeine and spice. It definitely woke me up. So then after that, we went to a place called Good Chemistry, which is a dispensary. Now, marijuana is recreationally legalized in Colorado. So there was nothing illegal about what we did, but you know, coming from a state where it's not legalized, it definitely feels a little weird to talk about, but honestly, it's amazing the kind of transformation that Denver has experienced as a result of medical and recreational marijuana. So went in there and it's, it's a full on industry. You know, there's, they have a rewards program, they have online ordering, they have daily specials, they have all these amazing things, the customers and the employees have such a great rapport, you're able to actually ask them questions. And so it definitely gave, it put a great taste in my mouth just seeing how it's not just that, you know, reefer madness kind of scary thing that weed is often portrayed as, but it's just people who are, some of them are doing it because they have achiness. Some of them are doing it because they want to get high. It's an amazing combination of things. And I'm definitely glad that I was able to work it into my Denver experience. And you know, if you're a fan or if you're just interested in trying it out, definitely go into a dispensary. Just look around, ask some questions, and they'll make sure that you feel totally comfortable with what you're doing. So after we went to the dispensary, we stayed in the Highlands and we went to this Mexican restaurant called Tacos Tequila Whiskey, where they serve tacos, tequila, and whiskey. And so we got chips and a bunch of different types of salsas that they make in-house that are all amazing, but then we got three tacos each. And so there were, there was just a nice spread of tacos and each one was more delicious than the last one. I had one with pork belly. I had another one that was like burrilla style. So it was small, but it was you know, caked together real nice. And then there was another one that was just cheese, avocado and uh, the avocado salsa. And it was just perfect. It was nice and simple and all the ingredients are so fresh and all the preparations are done so well that it was an amazing experience. So after that, we hung out for a couple hours and then we had our flagship event of the night, which was going to a concert at Red Rocks Amphitheater, a little outside of Denver, but most people in Denver would still say that it counts and it should be part of that weekend because it's only about 20 minutes away. So first, we did pick up food from a place called Blue Pan Pizza. That's Detroit style and it was absolutely delicious. And we, we probably ate it an hour after we picked it up just by the time it took us to pick it up, drive to Red Rocks Park and get all situated. And we tailgated it and it was still absolutely delicious. So I highly recommend you check out Blue Pan Pizza, whether you're getting one of the Detroit styles, getting some cheesy garlic bread or whatever else you wanna do. And then Red Rocks itself is it's simply a spectacle. You, you're, you're, first you have to basically trek up a mountain, you know, these natural Red Rocks to get to this concert venue. And then once you're there, you are literally in this, this Red Rock structure and so you're watching the, the band perform. And so I saw a Grateful Dead cover band called Joe Russo's Almost Dead. But while you're watching the band, you can't help but look around. And you know, to, to your left are some red rocks, to your right are more red rocks. But then ahead, you see the Denver city skyline. And as it gets darker, you see more skylights pop up and it just becomes this beautiful painting. You see other types of landforms. You see forest, you see a lake, you see a river, you see all these amazing, beautiful things. And, you know, when you're in that experience and you're experiencing this combination of nature, technology, music, being surrounded by all these other people who are just vibing and enjoying themselves, it's hard to not fall in love with this, the city of Denver. 
So then after the concert, we went to sleep because we had another long day of eating ahead of us. So Saturday morning, we woke up and we walked, you know, just to another place in Jefferson Park, walked to a Mexican place called Santiago's Mexican Restaurant. And we were just in the mood for a breakfast burrito because, you know, we'd had our tacos and chips and salsa and all that yesterday. So Saturday, we wanted to have breakfast burritos. And what they do at Santiago's is they serve them in a style called smothered, where they're covered in their propri proprietary green chili. And this is a crazy, crazy flavor experience because the green chili itself is sour, but it's also very spicy. And it's got a, just a nice combination of sweetness and all those different flavors that you really like, not to mention the actual burrito is delicious. So I got mine on the side, which I do recommend because that way you can have a little more control because when they say that they smother the breakfast burrito, they are drowning that thing. They are smothering it and then some. So after we went to Santiago's, then we went to a brewery up in the River North area or Rhino. Just so you know, most Denver neighborhoods, their nicknames are just the first two letters of each of the words. So, you know, Lower Highlands, Low High. Uh, Lower Downtown is Low Doe. River North, Rhino. So we went to a place called Ten Barrel, got to sit up on the patio. And the weather in Denver is just beautiful, especially if you're coming from the Southeast or the Northeast, where it can be a little bit more extreme, whether it's cold or hot and humid. So it was, you know, in, in the 80s, but it was not humid at all. It was just a nice dry heat. And so you know, we were just enjoying the sun, you know, hardly was even breaking into a sweat. And we were enjoying several of Ten Barrel's flagship beers. We got these nice French fry and Cajun chip nachos that were covered in steak, bacon, all these amazing things. We got a hot pretzel that was so hot that I did literally burn myself several times while I was tearing it apart and just had an, a lot of really great experiences while we were there. We were a table of 10, but they were very comfortably able to seat us and we just had a great service all across the board. It was an awesome experience. And then we knew we had to take it a little bit easy, go a little bit light because we had an early dinner reservation at a spot called Linger Echuaries, which is in Low High, Lower Highland. And I'll say this, Linger is one of the best meals that I've ever had in my life. I'm not exaggerating. So it's in a former mortuary, which is, you know, might make you feel a little weird that you're in a place where they used to handle dead bodies, but don't worry, I think they've cleaned it very thoroughly since then. But uh, besides that, we just, you know, ordered a couple courses and everything was just perfect. So, you know, we got things like if we got a bao bun trio where the bao itself was nice and fluffy and the fillings were flavorful and they were nice and texturally complex and everything about it was so, so good. And, Every course was amazing, but especially we had Wagyu sliders that were, they were, frankly, they were the most flavorful sliders that I've ever had in my life. And Wagyu is you know, very fatty and you know, it's, you're gonna pay a little bit more for it, but you are tasting every bit of that price increase. So you're gonna be very happy when you go to Linger. The drinks are awesome. The actual view itself is great. We were sitting upstairs, but the whole wall was opened up. So it was pretty much just like a big long wing, window. So. The weather was beautiful. You were able to just see some of the city of Denver. And then right after our meal, we walked right next door where there's a place called Little Man Ice Cream. And you know, you'll, you'll see a big milk carton and this old timey sign and you'll smell the, the waffle cones. And so we, I, I just got a strawberry ice cream cone for our walk while we were going back to the Rhino area to meet some friends. And it was, I think they said that there were like nine or 10 pounds of strawberries in each serving of ice cream, or not serving, each container of ice cream. You can taste it. It was the freshest ice cream I've ever had. And, you know, we had maybe about a mile or so walk to get from the Lower Highlands area to River North area. And honestly, I gotta say, when you're holding an ice cream cone while you're doing that walk, you're ready to walk two miles. You feel great while you're doing that. And so we just went out to that Rhino area, which is right over by Coors Field, home of the Colorado Rockies. And I was surprised that the downtown Denver area is actually pretty popping. Um, it's never too crowded, but every place, you know, no matter where we were going, you could find it's a lot of people and you know, it's all these amazing combinations of people. You have people who were born and raised in Denver. You have people who are consultants who are just in town. You have people who decided to just leave it all behind, quit their jobs and just start fresh in Denver. I mean, that's what's making it such a fast growing city is that people want to be there. People want to be there, whether they're interested in just the very laid back lifestyle, whether they're interested in doing a lot of things outdoors, whether they're trying to just smoke a lot of weed, there's really no telling why somebody comes to Denver. I would imagine most people are there for all of the above, if not a combination of those reasons. But I would definitely say that it's a great place to visit, but more and more people seem to be choosing to live there. So then Sunday morning, we 
We're once again still hungry. It took us a little bit of time to work up an appetite after the amazing five or six course meal that we had at Linger. So we walked our way over to a place called Sassafras, which is a kind of New Orleans inspired breakfast place. And we put our names down. They said there was an hour wait. So first we went over to their coffee bar and again, we got, they, they made some really impressive drinks like lavender lattes and all kinds of other cool stuff like that. And so we had our name down there was a farmer's market. So we started walking around there, but then one of my friends pointed out that there's a place right down the street called Highlands Cork and Cafe. He said it has one of the best breakfast sandwiches that he's ever had. So I'm a big breakfast sandwich guy. So I said, let's cancel our reservation at Sassafras. They made great coffee though. Highly recommend you check it out. So at Highlands Cork and Cafe, we got the Kiko's breakfast panini, which is on ciabatta bread. It's got egg, cream cheese, habanero cheddar. It's got some pesto aioli all kinds of really cool stuff that it comes together. And then when you actually get it, it it's just perfectly crispy. It, it was one of the best breakfast sandwiches that I've ever had in my life. Again, no hyperbole, it was perfect. They had it with a little side of cantaloupe, just like one piece of cantaloupe, which at that point don't even offer a fruit side. But besides that, the actual sandwich was so good and it held me over really well. So then it was still a beautiful day. So we decided to explore the area a little bit and we, we rode bikes around and Denver is a very commuter friendly area, very pedestrian friendly. So you know, we were able to go around the river. We were able to just go through the city and all of these, you feel totally safe. You definitely feel like you have your bearings. And you know, we, I wanted to keep on exploring, but I did unfortunately have my flight to make. So by the time that all was said and done, I had gotten to try all these amazing restaurants. I'd gotten to explore different outdoors environments. I'd gotten to experience a dispensary and do everything completely legally. And all of those things are just the beginning of what you can do while you're in Denver. If you're interested in going to Denver, whether you want to hit the town in Rhino, whether you want to explore the outdoors and go to Red Rocks and hike around that area or do anything in between, make sure that you check out American-Eats.com to learn more about Denver and start planning your own weekend.